Day 708 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses as currently Russia sits on more than 386,000 military personnel losses, which represents an additional 1,000 in the past day. Then as for hardware losses, 12 tanks, 16 APVs, and 33 armies artillery. Then with lots happening, let's head back to the map and start out in Russia today. As sources reported that the Nevsky Mazut gas storage in St. Petersburg had been targeted with a substantial explosion ensuing. And the fact that a drone not only penetrated the perimeter of the Russian air defense, but also hit a target close to a center of one of Russia's most important cities, speaks for itself. And still blows my mind. Then moving a little southeast to a location that Putin considers the greatest city in Eastern Europe, and all of Europe for that matter. As the Moscow thermal power plant malfunctioned after a large bang and doesn't produce any electricity anymore, at least on latest reports. Thus, Russia continues to deal with a very different war at home, as their infrastructure is crumbling at levels not seen since the Soviet times. So due to the lacking of spare parts, personnel, and funding, which are all direct results now of Russia's war against Ukraine. Then moving a little bit further south as the Russian Ministry of Defense reports shooting down two drones over the Voronezh and Belgorod regions. But they rarely ever show these neutralized drones they speak of, with the exception being in this instance today as uh, somewhere far, far away in the Nizhny Novgorod uh, oblast, a drone was spotted roughly 1,000 kilometers from the, the border, and that's just the border to Ukraine, with this one possibly being intercepted through electronic warfare means. And presuming that was a Ukrainian drone, that is once again some pretty impressive range that we just continue to see now. Then we'll head back into the Ukrainian map today and start out in uh, Avdivka of the Donbass, the Donetsk region specifically there, as uh, there was footage emerged uh, of a, a Russian assault unit activity with the longer form of the footage showing the assault group getting hit by Ukrainian tank fire from close range in the southern private sector of Avdivka. And straight from the horse's mouth, Russian ground troops took 19 houses, or 19 pieces of house resembling rubble at least. But let's step back into the macro for a moment, shall we? Putin's gone from Kiev in three days to 19 houses on the outskirts of Avdivka. Does anybody notice the inherently contrasting failure or complete disconnect between these two things? Because the thing is, Russia can say that they are the second best army in the world, or many times these days explicitly stating they are the best army in the world and most technologically advanced. But ultimately, no matter which way they look at it, maps generally don't lie. And even Russia and Putin cannot ignore them. And that's why I really like them. So close your eyes for a moment and just imagine, if you so could, your head of state in front of the whole nation as part of a televised interview that we can see here, uh, being part of the presidential uh, election that's coming up there for Russia, where he is talking about 19 houses, and meanwhile his fanboy hordes ignore something like, say, I don't know, 6,000 square kilometers of the Kherson North Bank liberation by Ukrainian forces. It's blissful ignorance. But hey, to be fair, some of the military personnel in the crowd didn't seem to think that 19 houses was worth anything celebrating either. But I digress, because somewhere in the east, a Ukrainian drone dropped a 40mm munition into an abandoned Russian T-80 BVM tank, causing the onboard ammunition to ignite and eventually catastrophically cook off. And so much so, seen from what seems like miles away as well. 
And it must be said that open hatches of abandoned Russian tanks are quite the norm, because when Russian tanks start to take on Ukrainian fire, things get a little bit heated and difficult for the new and untrained tankers on the battlefield, so it's, it's fight or flight for them. And what we find quite a lot these days is Russian tank operators hightailing it right out of there, or in British slang it might be to leg it, or my personal favourite, Australian slang, to piss bolt the hell right out of there. And not given a flying turret toss of a care about closing those hatches. Then somewhere in the south, now this one was uh, bordering Donetsk in Zaporizhia, pretty interesting stuff. So a, a Russian assault ended with a, a total disaster for the Russian attackers. Uh, Ukrainian FPV drones of the Bulava unit of the 72nd Brigade almost single-handedly destroyed this column, including three tanks, uh, seven MTLBs and, uh, and a an, uh, BMP as well, infantry fighting vehicle. Unfortunately, standard Russian doctrine gave the Ukrainian drone operators two days notice. And what I mean by that is, for example, seen on this satellite imagery, heavy Russian artillery scarring is present due to preparatory shelling just two days prior to the Russian armoured column making offensive moves in the zone. And certainly this type of approach may have been acceptable decades ago, but these days? It's just helping make Ukrainian FPV drone operators especially effective. Then moving across to the south for some of the biggest news of the day as Ukraine launched its latest round of drones and missiles into the occupied Crimean Peninsula as part of an ongoing systematic campaign to incapacitate military airfields, air defense complexes, naval targets, and even reportedly underground Russian HQs all in an act of defiance against its occupiers and to cut logistics to make it simply untenable for Russia to support its occupation in this uniquely less connected oblast to the rest of Russia, or at least the rest of Russian occupied lands. Now, of note for this massive Ukrainian strike against Russian military positions was targeting of radar stations in the north. Also, smoke was rising at Belbek airfield in the south, reportedly hit by at least two Storm Shadows or possibly now the Scalp LEG uh, missiles launched from Ukrainian Su-24M jets. But as expected, the Russian MOD claimed shooting down everything over the Black Sea. Although they did state that some targets were hit by the debris, but uh, make of that what you will. And ultimately, as the hours and days proceed, we'll even get a more accurate understanding of the damage caused to Russian military installations here. Then headed across to some news for today. So remember the GLSDB gliding munitions with the 155 kilometer or about 90 mile range promised from 12 months ago? Well, they have already been tested with first batches arriving in Ukraine as early as today. Now, these long-ranged and winged creatures can be fired from Ukrainian-operated HIMARS or M270s or from their own containers and, in fact, are all bought and paid for 12 months ago. So this platform is expected to become a very assistive, complementary addition to Ukraine's existing arsenals, particularly as they almost double the range of the HIMARS-launched uh, Gimlars rockets, which means Russia will be once again forced to rethink their logistical centers, hubs, depots, airfields, and anything else of importance, militarily speaking, especially as they are even more difficult for Russian air defenses to hit than the Gimlars rockets due to their lower radar cross-section, uh, complemented by their ability to perform complex flight maneuvers, which can attack targets from various angles, including the ability to strike from directions that might not be expected by the enemy, meaning it can hit targets that are not directly visible or in a straight line from the launch point, and theoretically, you could say from behind. So it's fair to say we'll see some very carefully well-chosen and disintegrated Russian military targets possibly very soon. And then only at that point, the reactive, the truly reactive 
Russian army, as we've come to learn, will have to pull back to safer positions again, thereby disrupting their, their shorter support and supply lines that normally feed into the, the Russian ground troops that are positioned all along the front line contact points. Or in other words, it just won't be helpful at all. Then, to be fair, let's take a look at some Russian hardware updates, shall we? That have most recently come to light. So here we go, Russia's new super tank, the illustrious 70-year-old T-55 main battle tank, spotted somewhere in the Kherson region, complete with impenetrable cope cage, unless of course you're a cheap drone that flies around this ghastly contraption. And I do wonder if this is one of the few remaining operationally capable T-55s uh, that remain in service with Russia. And at this point, probably. But of course, when they say Russia has, uh, I don't know, 15,000 tanks, a number that I do not doubt, they are often referring to something called the Soviet inheritance, whereby they count thousands of decades upon decades old tanks that were more or less sitting in mechanically soul-destroying outdoor storage for the past 50 years. Then headed across to some good news, so in, yeah, some really good news. So uh, after a prisoner exchange, 207 Ukrainian POWs returned home from Russian captivity. Now this exchange, like many others, has been brokered through the success of a mediation by the UAE or the United Arab Emirates to exchange prisoners of war between Russia and Ukraine. Then moving across to a super quick Russian military mobilization blunder segment today, really quick one, as uh, it's difficult to verify as yet, but uh, very plausible as apparently there was a Russian soldier crossing the treacherous front lines onto the Ukrainian side where he was asking for bread. And it's very plausible or believable because, for example, there's, there's lots of uh, reasons for this. And I've been holding off on posting this particular image from seven days ago of a Ukrainian drone operator spotting a Russian soldier hydrating himself via means of a puddle. Ah, the Russian military. What a paradise. Then moving across to a super quick funny to round it all off today, guys. So in light of the latest Crimean events, in true Ukrainian Air Force comedic style, moments after that event, they uploaded a, a little hello from one of their social media handles directed towards the fallout forces of the Russian military in Crimea. Cheeky lads. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please continue to, to comment and like. I uh, really do appreciate it. And all the support as well. Absolutely so much. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.